Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now recently I was chatting to the Power VR GPU engineers over at Imagination Technology and we got talking about ray tracing on mobile. And I discovered a couple of things that I thought I would share with you. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So let's start with the very basics. Now, when you're looking at a 3D game on your smartphone, everything you see there on the screen is a kind of a lie and a cheat and a fudge. And that's, of course, starting with the fact that we're taking 3D models with X, Y and Z information and we're trying to project that to put that onto a 2D screen. Now, of course, the ideas behind perspective and lighting and shadows have been around for hundreds of years in paintings and then in photos and now of course in 3D uh, uh, games using a 2D screen. In fact last year I went to the National Gallery in London and I saw this picture and I think it's absolutely a brilliant picture. It's painted hundreds of years ago but the artist clearly had a grasp of perspective, shading, lighting, shadows. I think it's absolutely brilliant. In fact if you look at it just from a bit of a difference you might even think that was a ray traced computer image but that was a painted by hand so hats off to the artist. Now the first step of course of projecting a 3D model onto a 2D surface, rasterization, is all to do with camera angles, perspective, triangles, transformations, rotations and all that kind of stuff and that gets you the kind of the model onto the 2D screen. But then after that you've got other things to deal with like shadows, reflections and lighting. Now at the moment when a, a GPU does things like reflections, shadows for example, it really is just a cheat to try to represent shadows on the screen without actually worrying about the physics of light and how light actually works. Now most uh, shadows are done using a thing called a shadow map. Now with a shadow map what happens is that before the scene is rendered from the user's point of view, from the camera's point of view, actually first of all a different rendering of the scene is taken from the light's point of view and then quickly you switch around to the camera's point of view and when you want to render a particular pixel you look to see whether the light would actually arrive there and the way you do that is looking at the distance. If there is another object between the light and that distance, that point you're trying to make, so the distance is shorter, then it must be uh, in shadow. And so therefore you can paint that pixel a darker colour to show that it is in shadow. The problem is that there's lots of, you know, this is a very crude technique and you get f lots of different problems and artefacts. One of them, for example, is hard shadows. Any piece of light that just escapes down the edge of, a, of, a, of an object creates a hard boundary. So you've got something in shadow and then hard boundary, something that's not in shadow. And of course that gives you this hard shadow effect. And so you have to soften the shadows. And there are a whole bunch of different techniques to do with how you calculate the shadows to kind of get the edges to be softer and to be smoother and better for uh, in, in realism terms. But of course it's all just a trick. It's all just a trick to make you look like you're seeing shadows. And then of course it gets even more complicated if you add in multiple light sources, you've got ambient light, you've got directional lights, you've got spotlights, and game designers spend a lot of time trying to place the lights in the right place in conjunction with the game designers so that they can work out how the shadows are going to fall, will it cost too much time in terms of CPU and GPU, too much calculations going on, Does you know do you get conflicts, of, you know it's very complicated and they spend a lot of time making sure that it looks good by staying within the kind of the boundaries of what is possible using these kind of techniques. Now ray tracing it takes the completely different approach, it actually models the way light works and so it's called ray tracing, you trace a ray through the scene so you've got the light and you've got the viewer and you can work out what happens to these beams, these rays of light. And of course when they, some of the lights just go into an object and they are reflected, some of them are absorbed, some of them are scattered, some of them create shadows and this is how it works by tracing the actual rays of light. And of course you're dealing with lots and lots of rays of light to get any kind of a good resolution. So we talk in terms of giga rays. How many giga rays can it process because that will tell you the computing power, the GPU power available to render that scene. Now Imagination have been playing around with hardware ray tracing for many many years and when they announced the A series last year, the new PowerVR A series, part of that announcement was that the B series, which we expect to see in the next three months, will include hardware ray tracing. 
Now this is hybrid ray tracing in the sense that not everything is done using uh, ray tracing. Some of it will be still the standard rasterization practices that we have in traditional GPUs, but on top of that there's extra technology that allows ray tracing to be applied to a scene. Now this has got two important factors and they are really are amazing. The first is for certain types of effects, ray tracing is actually more power efficient than using the tricks and the fudges that we use today for GPU. So that's absolutely amazing, the promise of power efficiency coupled with photorealism because we're using ray tracing. And the second thing is that for things like shadows, it really, really is a great bonus because no longer are you trying to create shadow maps using the technique I talked about a moment ago, but now we get kind of real uh, photorealism uh, shadows and they are easier to produce because there's no bouncing. So when a shadow is done, it kind of, you want it to hit the ground, this shows where the shadow is, and then there's not necessarily another beam that ray that goes off because there's reflection or scattering or whatever. So that makes it that kind of the first order. And in fact, all ray tracing hardware, the biggest problem is what do you do with the beams that bounce on further, the reflections and the scatterings and so on. And they, of course, can produce a cascading effect on the number of rays that the hardware is trying to process. And of course, there are lots of techniques to do with handling with that. In fact, one of the ones that uh, Imagination uses is called coherency gathering. And that's basically grouping up a bunch of rays together that have similar properties, similar calculations, and kind of working on them as a big bunch. And that uh, saves kind of CPU power, GPU power, sorry, uh, and uh, it also saves memory bandwidth and all these kind of things because it's gathered them together and said, well, let's deal with this lot now in one go. And that is a technique that uh, Imagination are promoting and are building into their new GPU hardware. So a couple of things I learned from Imagination while chatting to them that I want to share with you. The first is the code name for their ray tracing GPU is PRISM. The technology they are developing now is called PRISM and then it will go into specific models of GPU. In fact, the PRISM technology in various forms can even be bought by other uh, companies to be incorporated into their technology. But this new generation of hardware ray tracing from Imagination is called PRISM. And the second thing is I said to them, this is great, Prism, fantastic, the code name, Giga Rays, Shadow, Shadow Maps, great, fantastic, but without some visuals, this is going to be a bit dry. And so they've sent me over two images, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Now, of course, this is not final production. This is not final uh, versions of the Prism technology. However, this is a proof of concept that shows how their ray tracing is going. So let's have a look at those images. You knew to shut up and enjoy the view. Most eggheads want to talk it away. Okay, so there you have it. So ray tracing is coming to mobile and there should be some announcements in the next three months from Imagination about GPUs with ray tracing built into it. It's based on the prism architecture from Imagination and you've seen some actual images rendered using the Prism technology. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.